In a world full of mountain and snow, where people who ski like to go, there lies in the tracks bits and pieces of wax that affect your health, you should know. Research shows that long-term exposure to chemicals found in ski wax may lead to toxic health effects such as respiratory issues, hypocalcemia, liver, thyroid, kidney, and gastrointestinal issues. This is relevant because there are about 60 million ski visits in the U.S. per year. These visits produce about 2.8 million pounds of ski wax that are deposited in the environment. This is equivalent to the weight of 170 elephants. Ingredients in ski wax are closely guarded, but air samples taken during ski waxing have shown elevated levels of perfluorinated compounds. These chemicals and their alternatives are cause for concern. Meet Matt, a CU student and a competitive ski racer who decided to find out for himself how ski waxing might affect his health by conducting an air quality test. What parameters were you testing for? So I was only looking at really small aerosols. So I was looking at particles between 50 nanometers and 1,000 nanometers. So I was using a high sensitivity optical um, measuring device that only measured below uh, 1,000 nanometers per micron. What were your main results? So mostly found that with the normal hydrocarbon waxes, you got uh, about a, it was about 40 times greater number of particles at about the 200 nanometer range. So there was a very large peak at like 200 nanometers, and then there was a smaller peak at 100 nanometers. And then with the higher melt point wax, it, there was, it was more just the finer particles. So uh, the concentration of particles forming in the 100 nanometer range were about 40 times higher than background levels. Wow. So the fluoro waxes made more smaller particles. Yeah, so... So what this means is that the particles admitted into the air are very small, smaller than the diameter of a hair follicle. While waxing, the concentration of these particles can be up to 40 times higher than background levels. These submicron particles are associated with adverse respiratory effects. These chemicals are not just found in ski wax, but can also be found in household products like Teflon and Scotchgard. An estimated 95 to 100 percent of the U.S. population has PFCs in their blood. So how does this chemical spread throughout the environment? Well, here's a possible scenario. Our point source will be the skier or technician who waxes skis in a poorly ventilated area without any personal protective equipment. The chemicals released when the wax is heated is then inhaled or emitted into the air. Local transport depends on terrain, soil conditions, and snow melt intensity. So wax from the skis can rub off on the snow and particles accumulate. As the snow melts, chemicals are released into the local waterways. In addition, waste from ski shops ends up in landfills where chemicals can leach into the groundwater. As the rabbit drinks from the contaminated water, a nearby hunter spots his dinner. This is how the PFCs enter the food chain. The cycle then repeats as a new ski season approaches. Even though everyone seems to have PFCs in their blood, concentrations can be up to 45 times higher in ski wax technicians than the average person. In a day, it varies a lot, just depending early in the week, end of the week. I'd say if I was to break it down just average week, probably about 20 a day, 20 to 30 a day over the course of the season, probably close to a thousand skis and boards. Okay. So, if not, a little more. This? No, not particularly. <laughs> 
every now and then if I'm using a, if I'm doing some extensive repair I'll wear safety glasses but never anything much beyond that. We run a fan from the waxing area and sort of the repair area over here out the back wall um, and then we have a, a second fan over there just to sort of double its ventilation. Since PFCs can enter the body through direct contact, always wear gloves and wash skin thoroughly. PFCs can cause serious eye irritation, so always wear goggles. Since PFCs can enter the body through inhalation, always wax in a well-ventilated area. 